And let's talk about a healthy philosophy to have in studying advanced mathematics. Our goal should be to become a strong mathematician and problem solver. It's fine to be a strong mathematician. You can become an engineer, doctor, all sorts of different things. But the difference between, let's say, an engineer who is just a super strong mathematician versus one that's a problem solver is the difference between those who are going to create patents and solve problems and make a company and themselves more valuable versus someone that's just told what to do and then they will go ahead and, and, and construct things. So I believe that there's a benefit to focusing on both things and trying to improve in both areas. Our brains need to construct meaning how our brains attempt to construct meaning is huge. Constructing meaning in advanced math really should be fun. There should be epiphanies. It should be like, whoa, that's pretty cool. I see how that relates. Attempting to construct meaning in advanced math using lower level thinking strategies is brutal and it is not fun. The lowest level thinking is probably memorization without context. If we did a self-analysis, if we're in advanced math classes, the greater the variance in our test scores, the more likely it is that we're not taking efficient logical approaches to constructing math. If you find that you're getting a B on one test, then a D or an F on another, then an A and then a C and we're all over the place, odds are we're not studying, we're not thinking and, and constructing meaning in a logical way. Here's an example. I want you to look at these three animals. Initially, I was trying to draw a horse and a donkey and then, I don't know, the Eiffel Tower. Didn't work out so well, but by golly, looks like a, uh, a wolf, a black lab, and a rabbit, so we're going with that. Honestly, take 20 seconds, and I want you to think, how would you describe, how would you compare and contrast those three animals, and how would you share that with other people? Think about the things you would discuss. Okay, now what if we did this? What if our initial focus was, you know what? The wolf touches the ground in four places. The black lab also touches the ground in four places, but uh, a little bit closer together. The rabbit touches the ground in three places. If it's sitting, but if it's kind of standing, it's maybe two. But if it's running, it's four. So, once again, rabbit is either two, three, or four. The black lab is four points touching the ground, but a little bit closer together than the wolf, which is touching the ground in four points. There we go. We understand the difference between a wolf, a black lab, and a rabbit. I would say that's about the dumbest way to figure out how wolves and, and these three animals compare and contrast. But that's what we do if we look at the ground as the x-axis, and all we're dealing with over and over again is x-intercepts, and we're not constructing meaning. There's a whole nother world out there, a whole lot more information that can help us construct meaning uh, about these three animals as opposed to just looking at, hey, what happens when they're touching the ground. Case in point, those are easy to solve. Hmm. These are tougher inequalities. If we said there's the function, and when will this function be greater than zero, Hey, we can say, up oh, step one, let's try to find out where the uh, critical values are. Do -do -do -do. What points do we put in here? And then we'll make a line, and we'll look at those values, and then we'll plug in some values below and above those things, and then figure out when this function is positive and when it's negative. That's not bad, and that's, it, it is a good way to do it. It's just that along the way, we can construct more meaning. In fact, in the first semester of the pre-calculus class, we discussed, I discussed, that if we look at this in the context of graphing and tie the two together, we learn the material better and it sets us up for more success in the future. What I'm talking about is this. A lot of times in mathematics, once we get to the place where we add a little bit more um, difficulty to the problem, but for the sake of relating things and constructing meaning, in the long run, things become a whole lot easier. For example, when we get to the point where we're graphing these rational functions and we know where the asymptotes are and where the roots are and that sort of thing, and we graph this function and then we tie in the idea that whenever a function, and by the way, the value of a function is its y value, whenever a function is above the x-axis, the value of the function is positive. Whenever it's below the x-axis, the value of the function is negative. So then we could reconstruct the x-axis and say, oh look, 
the function is positive, then in here the function is negative, then it's positive, then it's negative, and then it's positive. Aha! So, when will the function be greater than zero? Ah, when the function's positive, from negative infinity to negative five, and from negative two to one, and so on. So we start relating those things together. And then, as we start working with the beginnings of calculus and derivative functions, like, aha! That's a derivative function. Whenever a function is above the x-axis, it's positive. Whenever a function is below the x-axis, it's negative. It's negative. It's positive. And we relate some of these things here, and then we realize, oh, what does that imply? What does the first derivative tell us? It tells us the, uh, where a function is increasing. In other words, where the tangent lines have positive slopes. And then we realize, oh, the original function would have positive slopes until it gets to a max here. Then it would have minimum or negative slopes. But then it continues with the negative slope after it does that bebop thing. And then it has a minimum in here, and the slopes go up. And this would be one possibility for the original function. So what we're able to do, if we're constructing meaning along the way in a logical way, in, in a way where you allow teachers to help you construct that meaning, then you don't see so many things being learned in isolation. And you don't feel like you have to practice 30 problems to do what you could do with six or seven or eight problems worth of practice if you're constructing meaning in the right way. So when it comes to first derivatives, we can say, hey, there is a relationship between the rational functions that we were just talking about. There is a connection with rates of change and slopes of tangent lines, with graphs of functions and when they're positive, when they're negative, and what that might imply. Uh, the relationship that this has to critical points, and then the usefulness of using first derivatives when minimizing or maximizing a function. So I want to encourage you to learn math wisely because it can pay off. Even if we never become engineers or go on to Calc 3 or whatever, the way of learning advanced math is really a gateway to becoming better and better problem solvers. It forces us to construct meaning in higher levels, using higher levels of thinking, as opposed to just saying, I'm going to brute force kick this in, get a decent grade, and move on. No, we want to, we want to take things away from advanced math classes that, believe it or not, can actually make us much more powerful no matter what the future holds for us. So, the philosophy and the value put on both becoming a better mathematician and a better problem solver is huge. So as a math student, listen for the cues and the clues to help construct meaning. And be careful, valuing understanding and connections less than a step-by-step -step, uh, approach to problems that seem to be in isolation of other problems is a good way to A, hate math, B, find math to be difficult, C, have no clue of how any of this will ever apply to anything else, D, leave you with underdeveloped problem-solving skills, E, allow you to be replaced by a computer, the undisputed heavyweight champion of the world, in following step-by-step -step algorithms to do about 100 million times more problems in the same time it takes you to do one, or F, all of the above. So again, become a better mathematician and problem solver often comes down to learning how to construct meaning. So utilize your teacher's wisdom. He or she knows where the math is leading.